Hey, welcome back to week two of our dashboard uh, series. Uh, my name is Ben, this is Emily, and uh, first I wanna say thanks to Lori for, uh, Lori Cripple, for preaching on Sunday. Um, we've been spending the last, uh, we started last week talking about dashboard and how there are certain lights and gauges on our car's dashboard that gives us uh, a sense of what's going on inside. Uh, oftentimes can offer uh, warnings and uh, sort of red flags to tell us to stop, to take care, to slow down, to seek attention. And uh, this week, Lori shared with you all about the temperature gauge. And uh, specifically in life, that is our, our anger, that sometimes we can get a little hot under the collar. And so first of all, I wanna say in your car, if the temperature gauge is where it's not supposed to be, if it's leaning toward the, uh, the red side, um, stop, like just stop and pull over, um, seek immediate attention that can cause a lot of major, major issues. So that was free advice, doesn't cost you anything. If your temperature gauge is pegged out, stop, don't go any further. Um, and I would say the same thing's true for life. If, uh, if you realize that every little thing is sort of pegging your meter and you're, you're flipping out over the smallest of things, it might be time to stop and sort of deal productively, um, with anger, frustration. In the sermon on Sunday, Lori talked with you all about this kind of crazy story with, uh, with David, who had uh, he got angry, and uh, he was actually on his way to go and kill off all of Nabal's uh, people, including Nabal himself, um, just because he wouldn't hook him up, and that was kind of crazy. And, uh, and so luckily, Abigail uh, came and kind of stepped in, gave him a little food, which is always helpful, yeah. and uh, sort of uh, dissolve the situation, or rather help David to process uh, his anger and deal with it productively. And so what we want to do today is, uh, or tonight with you is to kind of um, lay out for you just a couple of ideas about how to process your anger, how to deal with that, and maybe some, some practical next steps and uh, in, introduce you to a couple more scriptures. So do you want to kind of take it from here? So one of the passages that we want to take a look at is from the letter to the Ephesians. And this is the letter that Paul wrote where um, he, he has a little blurb about how to live as Christian people and then just a little insert about anger. And I want to read that to you. You might be familiar to you if you've grown up in church or been around church for a while. But this says, And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. So my whole life, when I've heard this passage, it's always been told me like you can't, you shouldn't go to bed angry. Yeah. Like you should never let your head touch the pillow if you're still angry about something. You should deal sure. with it right in that moment. And I'm not sure now looking at it if that's exactly what it means. Because let's be honest, it's really difficult sometimes, um, depending on what the issue is, to not be angry when you go to sleep. And some things I think might be worth being angry about for a period of time, so that you can figure out how to deal with it. So I think we need sure. to take a step back and see like what. What's really going on here and what really might we mean sure. by um, don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Something that we notice that is that this beginning verse in 26 where it says don't sin by letting anger control you, that's a quote. And it, um, your Bible might have a little footnote and it say this is a quote from Psalm 4.4. Who so was written by? David. Yes. Who was in the story, featured in the story on Sunday. So David wrote this prayer, and he, what he says in here, he says, don't, let sin, don't sin by letting anger control you, which is just what we read in Ephesians. But his next line says, think about it overnight and remain silent. And I think this is something that um, we, I was never given permission to do before, to be able to think about it overnight, but to remain silent. So I wonder if what, what David means, if what Paul meant later was, not that you're not allowed to ever be angry when you go to bed, but when you go to bed, you shouldn't be still controlled by your anger. Yeah. Like you should be able to take a step back and say, I'm really mad. This is what I'm really mad about. I'm going to sleep on it. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to think about it and say, is this something worth being mad about? And if it is, what are the next steps that I can make that can kind of diffuse the situation or correct the situation? Sure. Yeah, I think, I mean, even just thinking from a really practical standpoint, if you've got a teenager living at home who comes in late to curfew and you're, you're not happy about that, um, you, you really probably aren't going to resolve that immediately. Sure. But you can hand that over to God and commit to a period of silence, of processing, that can sort of help you 
um, deal with it more productively tomorrow. But you're not going to bed just flat out mad yep. and not able to think about the bigger picture. Yep. And I think that's the bigger, that, that's what's most important about don't let the anger control you or have, have rule over your life. Um, yeah, so I went to, uh, kind of on the same vein, I went to Joe's football practice one day because the coach said, we're going to have a parent meeting after the football practice today. All parents have to come to this meeting. And he went over several things about what he expected from parents. But one of the things that he said, he was like, I have a 24 hour rule. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you're gonna be mad at the end of the game someday. And he was like, you're gonna be upset your child didn't play enough, your child made a mistake. You think I made, a, as the coach, I made a mistake. You're just gonna be angry. And he was like, but as a parent, I don't want you to come talk to me for 24 hours. Like yeah. I want you to take some time and think about why you're angry. Is this really worth being this mad about? And if 24 hours have passed and you're still really upset, you can come talk to me. Sure. And he was like, your son on the football team, he can talk to me at any point, but as a parent, I'm gonna ask you to take 24 hours to kind of sit with why you're mad and then see if it's something really worth coming to me and talking about. And I think that's important and probably a lesson that he's learned uh, the hard way over sure. a long period of time but to tell people like sometimes when you're really mad in the moment it's you're not not that big of a thing like yeah. you need to sit with it and say like is this really worth making a huge deal about because what we're going to sure. see is sometimes the words that we use can cause a huge problem in our relationships yeah and so being mad in the moment can cause problems later yeah i don't know how many times uh, we have uh, said things or done things that uh, after the fact once things are resolved or at least come to a safer place, um, we're like, man, I wish I wouldn't have said that. I wish I wouldn't have done that. And, um, and I, you know, and I think sometimes when we think of anger, we think of like, as, as Laura used, I think the phrase rage, uh, that's, that's sometimes we see uh, anger as something that is, is physical. I think anger is far, you know, begins in, at far lesser grades than physical, uh, physical that, that Laura's talked about. Um, and so, but I think too, like we have other weapons and um, tools that we use to express our anger that um, to me is just as hurtful uh, as, as something physical. And so uh, we read in, uh, in the letter of James that, um, you know, the use of our, our tongue, the, what the words that we speak are incredibly powerful and uh, can do a lot of damage and can, but can also really help things. And so I wanna read that uh, to you now. In fact, that comes from James uh, chapter three and uh, I'm gonna read verses uh, three through six. Here's what he says. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, a tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire, and the tongue is a flame of fire, the whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is on fire, set on fire by hell itself. Those are pretty strong words. Yikes. Pretty strong words. But the reality is, the words that we use um, can cause great progress in someone's life. A uh, rudder is a very small thing, and yet it can change the course and the direction of a really large ship. Just simple small words that you use towards someone can alter and change the direction of their life. Um, and, and for the good, but also for the bad, there are some things, and even you may have uh, in your memory uh, a situation or a time when someone said something to you and it burned and etched itself in your life so hard that you still uh, burn from that. And so um, when it comes to dealing productively with our anger, a 24-hour rule, this can't be a bad thing. Um, think about what you're going to say. Is this going to help? Is this going to move us forward? Or is this really gonna just get my anger out and put it on somebody else? And uh, I think if we would just take a few moments uh, and follow David's advice, take, take 24 hours, take, take overnight, take a deep <coughs> breath. You don't have to let anger control you, but you can hand that over to God and just give it some time for God to begin to heal your heart and to recognize too that you've been hurt by something or there's a reason you're angry. Sure. And to sort of wrestle with that and to know that the words that you speak really do make a big difference.
So as you um, sit tonight with your community group and you discuss um, not only the Sermon on Sunday, but what we've talked about these couple of verses in this video, there's some practical next steps we think you can take the next time you find yourself being angry. And the first thing you can do when you find yourself being angry is to recognize you're angry and admit that you're angry. Just yes. own it. Like own that there's something that's made you mad and sure. made you upset and made you angry. And then after that, but we want you to to just to refuse to be controlled by your anger. Yeah. Just say like, I have the power of Jesus living in me and I'm not going to be controlled by anger. I'm going to be controlled by the Holy yeah. Spirit, Jesus living in me. Yeah, I think in, in, in those instances, we can choose to be the one who is handling our anger or we can hand that off and allow God, you know, the Holy Spirit through us to handle that anger for us. Yeah. So if you first, number one, recognize you're angry. Number two, recognize the Holy Spirit, Jesus living in you can keep you from being controlled by anger. The third thing is to commit to taking some time to being quiet, to being silent about it. A 24 sure. hour rule, kind of like our football coach has. This is that, that line from the Psalm that David wrote where he said to, to think about it overnight sure. and remain silent. And yeah. maybe that remaining silent part is really key because you have to stop your own talking, your own brain and just pray, think, process what you're, what you're angry about. Yeah. I think just thinking back over, maybe you've, maybe you've had some moments, uh, where you've, you where have? anger, where our, our, our listening audience, Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> maybe you've had some moments where you've said some things, you've, you've got some regrets from, from moments. Imagine if you'd have just implemented this one principle. I know for me and for us, like this would have saved a ton of just simply give it some time and be silent. In other words, shut your mouth, just take a break. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and the reason that that silence is so key is because you've got to, the, what we think last, really consider what you're about to say. Yeah. Ben talked about the passage um, from James where, about your tongue and how it, it guides you, like it sets your direction. We believe that the, the words that we speak have the power to create, they have the power to build people up, they also have the power to tear down and destroy yes. people. And so that's something you need to really consider and take seriously if you're angry. Are the words about to come out of my mouth something that are going to build up? Are they going to be helpful? Mm -hmm. um, or are they going to be be things that, as we read in Ephesians, give give the devil a foothold? Are they yeah. places where we're going to just start to destroy one another? Yeah, I think a, and a really fair question to ask during that season of silence, that, that those 24 uh -huh. hours or whatever it may be, um, is just, is the, are the words that I'm going to speak, are they going to move our situation forward? You know, are they going to make this better? Or is this just going to make me feel better about myself? Sure. And and I think if you can answer <clears throat> those questions honestly and choose the direction that will move us forward, um, you're going to see uh, just a, a complete and, and, and just changed direction in your conversation and in your moments where anger does sort of creep in and want to seek control. Yeah. So, yeah. So we hope you guys have a great uh, conversation tonight. We hope uh, that things are going really well for you. Um, we, I challenge you uh, strongly to um, commit to some next steps in light of uh, what, what you talk about tonight, whether it's directly related to uh, the sermon or not. Um, just what next steps do you need to take in your life to grow closer to Jesus, to become more like Jesus, and to live in a way that reflects Jesus? Um, as you do that, I, I, I challenge you to, to commit to those next steps, but also as you return next week to, to, to ask one another, how are things How'd going? You How'd you do? How can we help you move forward? Um, this is perhaps the most important work we do as a church is in these conversations where we are committing to learn more about Jesus and to learn to live more just like Jesus. And so hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you back uh, on Sunday, if not at your next group meeting. See ya.